Hello guys, Josh from C2000 here, and welcome to an episode of Comic Book Carnage. And because of a viewer's request, today uh, we are going to be talking about DC's Titans, which is a part of the DC streaming service if you're in the US, or it's on Netflix if you are in the UK, as I am. I ended up watching this on Netflix. We had Netflix over Christmas, so I watched Good Band the Ugly, Transformers Prime Season 1, The Punisher Season 1, and Teen Titans, or Titans as it's called. And um, I, I had some issues with uh, this show. Um, I've had some issues with this show ever since it was announced. Um, I originally had a video on the trailer, which was a reaction to the trailer, me watching it and me kind of talking about my thoughts. And that video was incredibly negative, uh, as was the prior video I did about Titans. And I decided not to upload either of those videos because I rewatched them and I thought I was overly negative. This is actually my second time uh, recording this video as well because the first one I did it off script. I'm also doing this one off script. But I'm going to make a conscious effort to not come across as such a negative and hateful person. <laughs> because uh, when I talk about this show, I have a habit of coming across as incredibly overly negative. And... Uh, I'm going to say straight out the gates, I did not watch the entire show. I got to episode 6, I believe, Jason Todd, the episode where Jason Todd was introduced, and I just noped out. And I had a rant video ready to go, which was the second video I did on this, uh, well, the second video that I did on this show, and I decided, no, you know what? I, I don't like this video. I, I'm not going to upload it. It's overly negative. It makes me look like a very horrible, hateful person. I, I'm not going to put this video up there on YouTube for my fans to see. Um, because I do want to... When I'm talking about DC, I want to project myself as being positive. Because I love DC. I grew up with Batman cartoons as a kid. When I, I kind of went away from comics for a bit, like, you know... And then I came back because of Batman Under the Red Hood in 2010. And I've been a fan of... I've been back and I've, I'd started reading the comics after that because it was like, oh, who's this Red Hood person? Then Red Hood and Outlaws came out in 2011 as part of No. 52. I read that and I'm like, yeah, I want some more of this Red Hood stuff. And then I was looking, I was looking, I found the original comic of Under the Red Hood, Lost Days, and... Then I started reading, oh, Deathstroke, he's got his own comic, cool, I'll read that. I started reading that, and I read, um, then I started reading Batman, because it tied into Batman. And then I saw there were Star Wars comics, I started reading those, and I just eventually got really invested in comics, and I've read Watchmen, Killing Joke, loads of comics, and I love them, and I just hate when I do videos and I let my emotions get the better of me and I come across as despising adaptations of these things because that's not what I want to project. I want to project the fact that I love these properties and it doesn't sit with me well uploading stuff that makes me look so negative. Um, okay, I'll be honest, I don't, show up, I don't shy away from sharing negatives. If there is something that really irks me about a film or a show, I will share it. And I have a fair few problems with this show. And first of all is the fact that they took the Teen Titans and decided to make it into like a dark Nolan-esque TV show. It's like, I mean, you can do it with characters like Arrow. I mean, they took Green Arrow, they took Green Arrow in Arrow and they made him like a killer, Punisher-esque vigilante, and it worked. I mean, I'm not saying it's the definitive version of Green Arrow, but it works. And like, as someone that wasn't a massive fan of Green Arrow, 
I really enjoyed the first two seasons, especially Deathstroke in the second season. It was a very unique take on Deathstroke, and I loved it. And I've been meaning to do a video on Deathstroke's, the differences with Deathstroke in Arrow. And, you know, I love that. I mean, some of the lighter seasons weren't as good. I mean, their version of the League of Assassins was pretty poor. Um, but, you know, you got to compare to the man himself, Liam Neeson, playing Ra's al Ghul in Batman Begins. So it's very hard to beat that, in my opinion. And speaking of Liam Neeson, I will have a review of Cold Pursuit up in a couple of days. And um, But anyway... Now, that's the introduction out of the way. I, I just wanted to show that I'm not someone that despises DC. I'm not just jumping on the bandwagon of uh, of hating DC because of the hell of it. I mean, in some of my uh, more recent videos, you can see me wearing a Batman cap. Uh, like, you know. So, I just wanted to make it clear that I'm not just jumping on the DC hating bandwagon. Um... And I do have some genuine grievances with this show. And I want to get into it. And I also want to put forward some suggestions as to how perhaps it could have been improved or fixed. Okay, so... Actually, first, I want to talk about the one episode I really enjoyed, which was the Doom Patrol episode. I don't remember what it was called. But it was the episode where we first met Garth or Beast Boy. And we first met the members of the Doom Patrol, which are going to have their own series later on, which I do actually want to watch that. I want to see the series with Doom Patrol. You know, I like that because it was a bit more lighthearted. It was a bit more fun and it felt a bit more like Teen Titans to me. Because, honestly, if you're doing Teen Titans, the most beloved version of Teen Titans was the 2003 animated version. And that's what a lot of people... That's where a lot of people first got introduced to Teen Titans. So, if you're asking me, if you're doing that, if you're doing Teen Titans, especially with the Dick Grayson team, which is Dick Grayson, Starfire, Beast Boy, Raven, maybe Cyborg. This version doesn't go for having Cyborg in there, which I do think is a detriment, because it means, from what I've seen, Garth doesn't really have anybody to bounce off of. I mean, they have him bouncing off of Raven in this, but... It, it, Eh, you know. I think, really, they... The tone they went for was kind of off. Uh, but, you know. That episode was a bit... Like, that episode was... I really enjoyed it, and it really stood out. Because it felt a bit more like what it should have been. As opposed to what it is. And... The first episode, I just finished watching Punisher. I watched episode 13, Memento More. And I literally had to double-check I still wasn't watching Punisher. Because Robin was dragging people's faces along walls and smashing a guy's head through a car and then riding and then pushing his head along the window so it cuts into his cheek. And it, it's like, that's not something Dick Grayson would ever do. Like, even if you. Like, even if you pushed him, pushed him really hard, I doubt he would do that. I mean, okay, there has been occasions where he's killed people in the comics, but... Uh, yeah, you know, okay. <laughs> but, I, I... And, thing is, when he's done that in the comics, when he's killed somebody, he has full-on frozen. He broke down. He did not cope. So, him doing such things to people is really out of character. I mean... I, and I'll address that later on, but the episode, as I said earlier, I didn't watch it all the way through, and the episode that killed it for me and stopped me watching was Jason Todd. The episode Jason Todd. And you might be like, Josh, why is that? Red Hood's your favourite DC character. Why did you not like this episode? And, um, I'm going to be blunt. It was a bigger disservice to his character than Arkham Knight was. Oh! Yeah. Yeah. I, I. He, as Robin, I, I want to clear some of it up. As Robin, Jason Todd only really became more cynical towards his death when he was like 16 ish. Like, when he was 16, 17 ish. 
Um, maybe even 18, like depending on the continuity when he dies. I think it's normally around about 16 he dies. Uh, and like then he has those years training in Italia and he comes back and he's, he's like in his 20s as Red Hood, I think. I think. Don't quote me on that. That could be wrong. I haven't looked up numbers. Um, that's my, that's the way I've always kind of imagined it and looked at it from, like, his designs and his looks. But see, in Lost Days, he's kind of rugged, he has a beard and that, or stubble, which kind of implies he's older, whereas he's kind of baby-faced in, a uh, when he's Robin, uh, which kind of implies to me he's a bit younger. Um, and also it would make sense that if he's been training with these people, he's been spending a fair amount of time training. Um... And so, yeah, basically, as Robin, I don't think he should be picking fights with police or breaking their backs. I, I think what they did was they took a look at Red Hood and they're like, oh, yeah, this this works fine with the tone we have for Titans. Let's have him break a copper's back. And it's a bit like they did that without really understanding Red Hood or understanding him as Robin. As Robin, for the most part, he was um, fairly cheerful. I mean, I'll play this flashback from Under the Red Hood. Mm-hmm. Okay, so do you, does that kid strike you as the kind that would break a policeman's spine? Doesn't strike me as that. I mean, Red Hood at a push, he'd probably break a policeman's arm or disarm them. I, I really think as a character like Red Hood, he's an anti-hero. You kind of need to be careful. You don't make him seem like a villain. And I think having him hurt police officers would make him essentially seem like a villain. Which is, you know... I think when you're writing an anti-hero, you need to kind of toe the line. Or, like, a vigilante, essentially. You need to kind of toe the line so he doesn't come across as a complete psycho and a villain. Um, which, you know, is why I've always found the character so interesting. Because he does morally questionable things for the right reasons and he does have his own kind of moral code even though it isn't exactly the same as Batman's and it's a point of argument between the two and I, I just feel like the show really doesn't get him and it doesn't get a lot of the characters it's trying to portray it's trying to portray Starfire and just I'm not the world's expert on Starfire, but I know for a fact she isn't... Uh, I'm not going to beat a dead horse. A lot of people have already spoke about problems with Starfire. I mean, thing is, the reason why I wanted to bring that up about Jason Todd is because... He's, like, a lot of people talk about him and are like, oh, it's a problem that he's there at the same time as Richard, uh, and they're both Robin. Which, yeah, I agree with. If you were going to have Jason be Robin, you should have had Richard be Nightwing. Uh, which, it does mess with the timeline that you're doing that. And it's not in a good way. I mean, you can have them be active at the same time, but just have one be Nightwing. Um, that would not have been... A difficult thing to do. I mean, he fights with his Screamer Sticks anyway. So, I really do think he should have been Nightwing in this. Especially given the fact it implies that he's gone away from Batman and he's trying to set up his own identity. Um, next problem, I, I come to Raven. Uh, Raven is just... Oh. oh, my Raven. Raven, 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 Raven. <sighs> I did not like this version of Raven. I mean, I'm not too hot on Raven's character in general. Um, but this was... Raven is solitary. Yes, yeah, she's solitary. She keeps herself to herself. 
and she's a bit like foreboding. She's a bit dark, a bit brooding. And you know, there was a joke that came out around about the same time as Justice League Dark that uh, does Batman have to uh, pay royalties to Raven for that <laughs> that he kept doing the entire way through the movie? Like you know, uh, there there was a bit of a joke that came out around that time. That, you know, like. Batman stole Raven's trademark, hmm, you know, he's, uh, he's having to pay royalties, um, you know, and it, it, it's things like that I love about the DC fans, they just pick up a little detail and they just, like, they can make something hilarious out of it, um, you know, some of the memes that come out of DC are just wonderful, uh, and some of the jokes, I mean, some of them are a bit, hmm, but some of, some of them are funny. And, um, you know, it's, but it's just like, uh, also, I just, <sighs> Raven is just, mm, she feels like a horror movie character. She feels like something from The Exorcist or The Shining. She doesn't feel like Raven. And, uh, I just... I think they needed to look again at the way her powers worked. Because yeah, they do have her use her healing and stuff. I mean, she uses her healing in the Doom uh, the Doom Patrol episode. She heals this person that they bring in and is very sick. Like she kind of stabilizes them. And they apply that she can heal people, and like, you know, like Raven does in other mediums. She did it in uh, the animated cartoon, the animated movies recently. Uh, I think it was Justice League vs. Teen Titans. Um, I think one of the team members got hurt uh, because they were scrapping with Damien in this danger room type thing, and Raven heals the. Uh, actually, I think it might have been Damien that was wounded, and she heals him. Um, it was one of them, but. You know, I, I've, that's the only part where she really felt like Raven, where she's kind of like she's healing this person. Um, but like, you know, uh, just some of the character beats fell off and just the, some of the music as well in this show, like, okay, so the next, uh, the, uh, the music, just like, the theme song feels wrong. Um, the theme, the, like, the, you know when the Titans comes up and you, you have like, this guitar with this dun <laughs> Music kicking in, and it, it's a bit like, huh? Like, I mean, I, I, I want to, like, talk about uh, appropriate music. I mean, Arrow has kind of like the... Kind of upbeat uh, drums and like you know uh, kind of like rock kind of music which but it's upbeat it's not kind of like you know it's like a energy pumping kind of thing which works for Arrow because he's acrobatic he uses martial arts he moves a lot and then you have Constantine mystical kind of sounding music and honestly if you want a masterclass in how to write a dark superhero TV show watch 2014 Constantine Constantine is the most depressing yet charismatic character like period and like I really think if they wanted to do a dark Teen Titans show they needed to take a few cues from Constantine and the way Constantine handles humor. Like, because that show is genuinely funny. There are bits where I burst out laughing watching that show. And like, when he makes appearances in other stuff, like, he appears in Legends of Tomorrow and like, some of his scenes in that are funny. Like, 
the bit where he like he gets back in time and the ball the ball kick paradox that that entire scene had me laughing out loud it was but yet it had this really the the line at the end was really sad and like it made you think damn this is some heavy this is some heavy stuff and like but you know it was done in a way that was hilarious and like kept you entertained whereas this uh, titans just uh, and that's the next thing i'm going to come on to if they wanted to do a dark dc so D, blah, blah, blah. if they wanted to do a dark dc show centered around a team there were f- two three options i can think of that would have been a much better idea first of which is Justice League Dark with Constantine, Zatanna, Etrigan, Deadman. That would have been, I mean, yeah, it, it would have been CG heavy. So maybe not a good idea for a TV show. But it was on the DC streaming service and it is supposedly meant to be done by DC. So I think they can afford the CG. Uh, just saying, uh, you know. Uh, or at least have something close to the movie level CG. Um, I think they could have done that. It wouldn't have been impossible. Uh, also, Constantine had some good practical, good CG. Uh, like that, and that was done on a. I'm pretty sure that was done on a smaller budget. Um, because it wasn't even done by DC. It was done by a different company. I think it was NBC. Um, it was done by like one of the American TV uh, channels. And then the other two options I can think of would be Suicide Squad, which I know that would be difficult because you've already had two things very close to it. You had the movie, which was questionable. I personally liked it. A lot of people didn't. And then you had Suicide Squad Hell to Pay, which that was uh, fairly successful. And then the, the other option and the one that I think would have been amazing... He's doing Outlaws TV show. Honestly, when I watched the trailer, my initial thought was this was supposed to be an Outlaws show at some point. Like, you know, because of the tone of it. And also, I think you could do an Outlaws show in a dark tone, but yeah, at the same time, do it, it wouldn't feel dark for the sake of being dark like Titans is. It would feel dark because that's the way it is and that's the way the characters are that and you know if it was done well with a good director and a good scriptwriter you could genuine you could genuinely make the audience feel sorry for these people i mean the way i describe red hood and outlaws the the original team anyway in concept is a group of three broken people that work together to try and be more than they are you have red hood that's a a psychiatric time bomb and quite frankly has done some very sketchy stuff in his history um and he doesn't want to be a bad person he wants to be a good person he wants to do the right thing but he has some pretty questionable methods you have Roy, who's a drug addict, he's been through some things, he's got issues with Oliver, um, very similar to Jason, who has issues with Batman, and Starfire, she's the glue, she holds them together, she supports them both, she's the one that's happy most of the time, yet underneath it all, she does, she does still have her own problems, and... Ultimately, I'd also personally say throw Rose Wilson in. I mean, I mean, she had a criminally she had a criminally low appearance in the original Red Hood and Outlaws run. She appeared in one, uh, one, one maybe two comics, helping Jason and Star out at the end with uh, like you know, because it was the whole thing where Star had gone off to try and find the person that had been responsible for her slavery and stuff and basically Rose rocked up because they were she was paid to try and kill Jason and Roy and she ended up working with them. Um and like you know, I, I just think have her be a part of the core team and 
she could also have some interesting interactions with them because you have a group of people that understand each other, which is a bit like, you know, it, it's the same way the Teen Titans work. You have a group of people that have been through similar things and understand each other. And it's the same with Red Hood and Outlaws, like the Outlaws. You have a group of individuals that have been through some pretty rough things, some pretty nasty things, some pretty, like, life-changing things. Like, Jason died... Was Jason was murdered and resurrected, and he has those memories, and it causes him a lot of grief, a lot of suffering. And you have, like, Starfire that has shady stuff. They've all been through things, and they're trying to rise above that. They're all trying to get past that. They're trying to heal, and they're trying to be heroes, essentially, but, like, you know, in their own way. Which, you know, that could be an interesting show. I mean, like, Look at Daredevil. Daredevil handles some very dark themes, but it's amazing. I mean, look at the exchange between Frank Castle and Daredevil in Season 2 on the rooftop. That just shows two opposing viewpoints perfectly. And I honestly think with a smart writer and the right characters, this show could have worked. But I, I just think they made... I think the concept was flawed from the beginning. Uh, anyway, guys, let's have a discussion down in the comments. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.